Okay, YouTube, how do I save this now? Come on. Is that updated? Sorry. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to pull chat up so I can see. All right. This is going to be a very janky style stream uh, because I just kind of decided to do this today. Um, so I got my Sega Genesis Mini. Um, I didn't actually think about buying this. I wasn't going to. Um, only if like some hardware hacks were available to do it. Um, but looking at the initial like board view and stuff, there wasn't really anything uh, you could do with it off the bat until we unlock some software or the guys unlock some software. Um, I just I don't like the Genesis. It's not a system that I've ever really enjoyed. Um, there's a couple games on it like the Lost Vikings, but I'd rather play that on DOS or on Super Nintendo. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm just taking a look at the controller right now. Um, it feels pretty solid. The plastic is different than, uh, what was with the original system. Um, I don't know if you want to call that high praise. The original controller sucked. Um, but this is very much, uh, these don't kind of torque when you twist them. Um, the buttons, they feel fine. Um, D-pad feels about as shitty as the original. <laughs> um, I, like, I, I don't, I don't like this system. I hate the controller. I, it just doesn't feel good. The D-pad is terrible. Anything that's got a round, you know, D-pad like that where kind of the whole thing moves around, uh, sucks. Um, it's very reminiscent for the, the... 360's D-pad was very reminiscent of the Genesis. Um, so I'm not even going to turn this thing on. Basically what we're going to do today is we're going to take off the CPU and take some pictures of that for the guys. Um, so here's the system itself. I guess I can lower this a little bit. So um, I actually haven't taken a look at this yet. Um, initial thoughts, the 
injection molding for the casing isn't oh that's weird isn't great the labeling on here isn't great um, this is noticeably less nice than the PlayStation Classic and the N64 Classic, I would say. Um, just kind of judging based on the case materials, um, the, the plastic itself, uh, what's really telling for me is if you look at the front edge, it's not going to show up on camera, but on the front edge, um, you can kind of tell how they did the injection molding for this, and it's kind of ugly. <laughs> I mean, it kind of matches what the original Genesis was like, so um, that makes sense. But it, it kind of bows in places, it's got like these sharp edges, and it doesn't quite meet in a couple places. The buttons are about what you would expect. This is pretty loose. Um, volume knob has got a really weird, it's really easy to push it on this first, I would say, quarter, because that doesn't even, we're going to have to crack this open, it looks like the plastic isn't even molded properly to that, that potentiometer, um, but that first quarter is super easy, and then it hits this really hard and low, or this really... Um, frictiony point here and then it kind of snaps um, I'm not even sure that the volume knob does anything so I might just be talking out, out of my butt um, yeah so there's a couple I'm just going to rag on this thing because I, I don't like the Genesis uh, the labels are crooked on here um, very crooked um and actually this one's not on all the way so uh, placed by human obviously um, the URL for the Genesis Mini is HTTP colon not HTTPS which it doesn't need to be I guess but um, it's just very uncommon this day and age to do something like that um, and there's no rubber feet the PlayStation had it the NES had it, and it was a good place to hide your screws that go here, and here, and here. It's a good place to hide that, and they didn't put those on there, they didn't feel the need to. So this can just, just slide around. I mean, literally every other system on the market has figured that out, and they haven't. And I don't know, it just it doesn't it doesn't feel good to me. I don't I don't like it. Uh yeah, so I ordered the system today. Um I ordered the system today on Amazon. Um and it was one day shipping or same day shipping, which is pretty cool. Um I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. So we'll take apart the system and then we'll take apart one of the controllers. Um, I guess the good thing is is if I ever wanted to play Genesis games um, I probably wouldn't do it on this system but I would at least have the controllers so um, whether or not the controllers are worth 80 bucks in themselves probably not. Um, the original PlayStation being worth about 80 bucks I would think is probably pretty accurate um, because those were some really high quality controllers. Um, and the PlayStation itself was just kind of fun to hack because Sony doesn't know how to secure their shit. Is that all of them? Yeah, that's all of them. So, uh, so there's no, um, it's interesting, there's, ah, okay, yeah, so that's why this, uh, 
that's why this volume knob seems kind of bad is because it's not actually it's not actually molded to fit onto anything and this is just kind of friction between this piece of plastic and this plastic so that's why that feels kind of crappy um, and this volume knob the reason that feels bad is because it's uh, plastic welded in there which is a pretty cheap method to do this type of thing um, it's noticeably less quality than the NES Classic and SNES Classic. Um, the reset button is pretty simple, um, but the fact that these things are loose just tells me that the actual hardware manufacturing of it wasn't very great. Um, and the fact that the screws that they use seem very... Oh, man, that's... Okay, let's take a better look at this. So, let's take a look at the board. I know everyone was really excited about this, and I bet you what they did is they probably took a look at what they could sell each unit for. They didn't want to be more than, than the NES, or the SNES Classic. Because that was, that was either 80 or 100 bucks when it first came out. And they looked at the PlayStation Classic, and they were like, hey, you know, somebody else did this, and they absolutely failed at it. From a game perspective, that's the reason that the PlayStation Classic wasn't good. It wasn't that the hardware wasn't there. Uh, the hardware was there. The emulator wasn't configured properly. Um, they probably should have overclocked the processor a bit. Um... But ultimately, the system just kind of floundered and didn't really do anything. It's great for us hackers, but otherwise, it's probably a letdown for anybody that isn't going to add more games to it on their own. So I apologize for this. I just need to get my camera kind of set up without falling over. Okay, and this is going to be very bad camera work, but I don't care. Like I said, I did not plan on doing this today. And we'll take a better look at the board and the microscope, and I'll just kind of point out things that kind of bother me. Um, uh, just at an initial glance. So this uses the uh, Z7213 processor by Zuki, um, which is essentially an all-winner chip that uh, we don't necessarily know how it works or, or or what the specs of it are and that type of thing unless you know you have UART to it and everything um, but there's no data sheets out there it seems like this is the only device on the market that has used this chip um, I'm sure there are others my calipers so my calipers are Dead. the battery on my calipers are dead but what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare this against um, just from a physical silicon package I'm going to try to see if this is in any way related to the H3 or the R16 the H3 is used on the uh, banana pies and no the orange pies and like the Pine 64s I believe and then the R16 is used on the all one R16 is used on the NES Classic so I'm just going to take a physical I'm going to clamp this on here like this to kind of get this size okay um, I'm going to find an NES board that I have laying around somewhere which I might not have but probably do This is going to be a pain because I don't remember. Alright, All right, so they look about the same. 
That's exactly the same. The ramp placement is essentially in the same spot, so at least we know that the pinout is somewhat similar. Um, the physical dimensions are essentially exactly the same. So we know that the, the, the physical outline of the package is the same. Um, let's just take a look, compare it to the NES, NES board. So, um, we know a few things. We know that the it has the same PMU as the NES. Um, the PMU is the power management unit. Uh, I believe it handles all of like the all the conversions from 5 volts to 3.3 volts and your CPU V core and all that shit. Um, we have a crystal here, which is in the same spot as this crystal here. Um, let me get a better angle. or something. Or if I can manual focus it, that would be great. Properties. Configure video. Let's bump into manual focus. Okay, that's pretty good. That'll do. Okay, so uh, NES board, Genesis board. Um, let's they're kind of flipped the same way around, but I'll flip it upside down. Um, okay, so the R16 is exactly the same size as the Z7213. Uh, the RAM is basically in the same location. Uh, NAND is basically in the same location. Um, the PMU has been moved and rotated. Um, but ultimately looks like it's about in the same orientation. Um, that's going to obviously live close to the micro USB port. Um, I believe it uses the same, yep, yeah, it uses the same chip um, to do HDMI out, uh, which I think takes the LVDS signal and converts it to HDMI. Um, what else is noticeable here? Um, like I was saying, the crystal is pretty much in the exact same location um, with the resistors and capacitors in between there. Um, uh, RAM is flipped, which is interesting, um, but that might just be a difference in these packages. Um, NAND is the exact same physical size. It looks like it's pretty much configured in the same way, too. Uh, maybe some changes in the resistors. Um, this is physically, this is, this one is 256 megs. This is um, 512 megs, as confirmed by others. Uh, so let's just take a look at the Genesis board underneath the microscope. So I'm going to switch to it.
There we go. Does that work? Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Um, I just had to reset up my streaming machine. I'm on a new one. Um, and I had to reset up all my profiles in about five minutes. So, um, what I was saying is that the power switch or the reset switch is very small. I have no idea how that's going to ha uh, handle, you know, over time as far as uh, quality goes. Usually those small ones um, break pretty easily. Um, obviously had some sort of manual inspection. Um, as far as the quality of the components, they seem to be of lesser quality, I would say, um, than the NES and SNES, which is uh, to be expected, I think. Um, the board itself is pretty decent in quality. Um, it's a little bit thicker than the PlayStation Classic physically, um, which gives it a little bit better of a feel. Um, the solder mask is decent. Um, so there are a couple ICs that I did want to take a look at specifically. This guy right here, this down converter four six oh three quad analog switches on low resistance no nope, that's not what I'm looking for it's the wrong package TI high efficiency step counter okay so it's a six is that, is that the same one as the uh, PlayStation Classic? No. Mate. No. Um, they are TLV 62565s. Um, devices are synchronous step down converters optimized for small solution size and high efficiency. The devices integrate current blah 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 blah. Um, okay, so it provides the voltage output for looks like the USB ports. Yes. Oh, uh, maybe not. Because voltage in is this pin here, I believe, um, bottom left. So that is running from, so where's voltage out? Voltage out is, there's an enable line, FB, V out goes from top two pins. I wonder if that's just for uh, like an LED or something. No, that one makes sense. Um, but it looks like it is a voltage regulator, not. Yeah, it's a voltage regulator, not a. Um, uh, da, 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 uh, current limiter, so it's not like the PlayStation Classic. Um, we probably won't have to do any hardware mods to get actual USB stuff working. 
which is good. Um, let's see what else is here. There's a lot of test points. They usually tend to seem to be around the power points. PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Um, some stuff coming off the CPU. I think these two are like UART, I believe. Um, on the other side, we have some. If anybody has been looking at some of the stuff that's been, or some of the images that got leaked early and stuff, and board views, um, these points here, you'll see these throughout the. Uh, you know, kind of surrounding here. Um, maybe I can zoom out a bit. You'll see those there. They kind of go around the perimeter of the NAND and the RAM and the CPU. Um, the last one's right here. Um, those are for if you had like an RF shield to put over top of it and solder that down. Um, I don't know why they would have put that there and probably just cost stuff you know, using this shield instead. Um, so there's nothing really notable versus the NES and SNES classics. Um, one thing that interested me was this switch here. If you flip it over you can see that there is through hole here, but I believe that this is just, I don't know if I have my um, multimeter anywhere. Not on me, so I can't just test continuity, but I'm assuming that it's just if they're planning on possibly having a through hole component on this and they decided not to. Um, probably I'm based on price. Um, <laughs> so what's really interesting is that the, the CPU is actually marked where it should go, which a PlayStation didn't have. Kind of screwed me over. Um, so the only really thing that's kind of interesting, let me get this so I can see this. No, that's not helping, is it? Um, this chip here. This chip here is, in fact, a USB hub. It is, can I get light on that? There we go. I believe this is the USB hub anyway. By the USB ports it's located close. I don't assume it is. There was a USB port on here at some point, or a USB hub. It is a MA8601. Um, I believe this is the four port USB hub. That's a great picture right there. Um, I believe this is four port, so you can kind of see where. Let's take a look. I'm just going to use my screwdriver to point. So we have these two lines here. This is a data pair. You can tell that they are a data pair because they're symmetrical there. Um, I believe these are empty USB pins here. If you look at the data sheet. Um, da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. It's weird that there's only one data pair there. So let's flip this over. Ah, okay. So there's a second, you see this data pair here that goes straight to these USB pins. There's a second pair that go here, and there's a little bit of um, uh, ripple there to keep the keep the traces the same length as you need to with USB. Um, so uh, it, what are these? Okay, so these holes are here. So kind of close it is. Oops. Okay. So this is port two. What we were looking at on the other side, those are the traces for port two. Port one is probably living right underneath the chip. Uh, so those run over here. Um, if you wanted to do like an internal USB uh, mod, what I would do is I would probably go off of I have no idea if this USB hub is um, configured in some way only to use two ports instead of four, um, but I would imagine that the other um, 
well let's see if we just count so let's say that this one and this one go to port 2 let's say this one and this one go to port 3 this one this one probably go to port 4 this one this one probably go to or port 1 port you, you get it it's it's grouped into pairs of two um, is essentially I, I remember looking at the data sheet a while ago and I believe that's how it works. There's that number if you want to look that up. I have a 8601. Um, I believe it's a four port USB hub uh, with a 10 or 12 megahertz oscillator on it, I think. Uh, so nothing too special there. Um, this here is probably going to be some sort of uh, uh, isolator or something of the sort. Um, just to kind of protect those USB lines from that, you know, so you don't get overload and then go back to the switch or go back to the uh, not switch. Think about network, networking stuff all day uh, to the CPU or the USB hub. Uh, so that's that. Uh, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the CPU with my handy dandy um, thermal whatchamacallit, um, my hot air soldering station, that's what, that's what I'm thinking about. So I'm going to switch back to the webcam, and basically all I'm going to do is mark off this point, so yeah the only thing that's really surprising about the system so far to me is that they would so closely follow the NES and SNES classics, um, almost to a T. Right, I'm going to do this under the microscope. It makes it a bit easier. That's why I bought the thing, right? This is just going to help me line it up better if I try to put it back on. Um, I don't really have the tools to put it back on. But we will, uh, we will make do. Um, if I need to, I'll just get a solder stencil and some solder balls and we'll go from there. But that'll take some time. So, But I'm not in any rush to play this. So I don't really care. I mean, sacrificing a console for the good of the community. Why am I doing this? I feel like it. I don't know. That's a pretty poor placement of that tape, but it gives me the gist of it. Um, circuit board does have markings in the top left for when the CPU should go, um, but this is just a better visual indicator for me personally, because when I'm looking through the microscope I can line it up almost exactly. One more piece. So yeah, I didn't really feel like doing this today, or kind of 
at all because I didn't think the hardware was that interesting. But the guys at Mob Night Classic and others were talking about the hardware today and they were talking about how nice it would be to have shots of the CPU and how it lays and everything like that. Um, so I figured why not? Why not? So I bought... Whoa! There goes my camera. Um, sorry about that. Sorry. 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 There we go. That's not balanced. But whatever. Um, so I figured why not buy it, get it same day shipping on Amazon. And we'll go from there. So I'm just putting some flux down. Try to get onto the chip a little bit. There's not a lot of space, but it helps sometimes. And we'll just put a little bit extra up there. Alright. So now I'm going to use my hot air station. Get all these cables out of the way. I'm going to have a set too. Alright, so I'm going to set to 450, which should be. Enough. Oh, I need tweezers. Don't I? Oh man, I'm so stuck in here. Urgh. Urgh. Tweezers, I got my hot air station. Bit more flux, a bit more flux. There goes that bottom piece of tape. side piece of tape, but we only need two.
This does not want to come off. Bump up the temperature a little bit. There we go. Okay, so uh, bad news. Um, this is not the same pin configuration as the R16. Um, or at least it's not just by telling from how the chip, how many balls are on this on this thing here. Um, there's just way too many balls on the, on the actual board itself. Um, see, let me see if I have my stripped down NES board on here. Alright, so here, if I can get this in focus, here is the R16 board. Oh, OBS, I can actually see what I'm doing here. Alright, you guys can't really see that. Okay, so this is the R16 board, which is the NES board. So if you look, we got spaces missing here, here, what is it, the fifth row down? And that's about it. So let's look here. Fifth row down, we're missing here and here. Very interesting. This might be the exact same layout. It's the same package, at least. At the very least, it's the same exact package as the R16. Same pin spacing, same um, pin count. Um, I'm zoom in here. This can get kind of squirrely. A little hard to see. Okay, so one of the things I'm going to look at specifically is oscillator placement. Because the oscillator is only going to have two lines coming out, out from it to the CPU. And if we judge where those pins are, we might have a better idea. Okay, so we go from here. This resistor over to this pin that is bottom right, fourth from the bottom. The other side goes to the pin next to it. If we look at, oh, sorry, that was out of frame. I apologize for that. Oh, 
and my board stuck to my puck. That's great. If we look at, I'll make sure that this is in frame this time. <laughs> okay, so essentially what we're looking at are uh, these lines here. So this is the crystal, the oscillator, and it runs to these two points, which are the exact same two points on the Z7213, on the Genesis. Obviously this board's been cleaned up quite a bit and it's going to help to clean that other board down, but I'm just doing initial impressions. Um, what else is noticeable? Um, Crystal 2. Do we have that populated? Does that run to anything? Oh, yeah, we can take a look at that. We can take a look at that. So, this is really not going to help anymore. I'm just going to peel it off. Oh, I am so sorry for that. Dan, if you're watching, I only have one response, and that response is YOLO. And who cares? So I'm, I'm going to have to clean this up a little bit. Ah, oh, look how gross that looks. Look at that. Ugh. All right. So if we look here, I'm just going to take some alcohol real quick to this. There's a second like crystal spot here, which I know very well because I thought that it was US, like another USB port on the NES and SNES, and that wasn't true at all. And I made some bad assumptions. Anyway, so that runs to these two pins, or this pin here and this pin here. So top right pin, two over, and then one down, and then these two. So. If we look at the NES board, you'll see that it runs very simple or similar configuration, goes right to the same spot. So I'm willing enough, without doing a deep dive into how this is configured, um, I'm willing to say that the internal USB, so you can check this too if you want. If you look at the data sheet for the R16, I'm sure you'll see that these lines here, which I'll show you how those are out, these are the USB lines on the very corner. Because those run, if I can get this board in focus, if I zoom out, get this board in focus a bit, you'll see that those lines which are these lines here, and all the way down over, and then underneath the USB hub. So I bet if you looked at the R16 docks, those top two right pins are probably USB. Uh, D plus and D minus. Um, judging based on the corner, I would even say like D zero plus and D zero minus. But yeah, otherwise everything looks basically the same. Um, I'm not even going to try to like remove this and judge based on that and everything. It's not worth it. Um, but just the fact that this crystal is in the same place, this crystal in the same, is in the same place, and I'm pretty sure that the USB is in the same place, um, I would say that that's probably a good bet. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, here's the other thing. If you look at uh, this line here, this is the micro USB port. These are the data lines going up. If you flip this over and look at the board, those run da 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 to the four um, vias right here. So the CPU is going to be right here, four vias right here. So we flip this over. We try to find those four vias. I did a really bad job with that. Ah, here they are. Those four vias in a group here. They run to these two pins here. So this is going to be your OTG. And these here are going to be your USB. And it would really make sense to have, it would make total sense why you would put your OTG right next to your D0 or your, your uh, two data pins on the first part, or the first port of the microcontroller, the, the USB hub or USB controller on the CPU. So um, Z7213 is probably pin compatible with R16. Um, a fun thing to check would be to actually like drop in an R16 onto this board and see if it works. Um, I am guessing that it might. Um, but what probably happened is the R16 was manufactured a long time ago. And um, this is just wild speculation. I am not a hardware engineer at all. I'm just hobbyist. Um, my guess would be that the R16 was first produced in 2014. And I think they probably stopped making it a long time ago. Um, and then decided to, you know, after the success of the NES and SNES, they decided to possibly even do like a die shrink or something like that and then call the Z7213. I don't know why they would have put it under a different uh, make name, but they did. Um, and they probably changed some other things with it and probably changed some stuff with it, but they probably kept it pin compatible. I know that the A33 and the R16 are essentially the same thing. Um, they are definitely pin compatible. So uh, since we don't have any documentation on this uh, Z7213, um, I would say that we should start basing all of our research based on the R16 and the A33. Um, so that is pretty much all I'm going to do tonight. Um, just because I don't feel the need to do anything more right now. Um, if the guys really want, I can try to chase, tracing some other things back, but I'm reasonably confident that this is similar. Um, the big thing to be would be to check the top two, or probably the top four pins in this corner. Um, I have no idea what those numbers would be, but it will have it on the map. You're going to have... Uh, probably D0 or D1 on this side, um, and then you're going to have OTG just to the left of that. Um, so that's all I'm going to do for today. Uh, like I said, this was a teardown of the Genesis. Oh, you know what we can do, actually? We'll take apart the controller. And we'll see what that looks like. We'll take a look at that board real quick. Because I don't know that I saw anybody do a teardown of it. So I might as well. Oof. This, this is going to be jank. We'll go back to the webcam. There we go. I've been live for an hour. Oh my god, it's nine o'clock. I need to stop this. I need to like have food and watch TV and relax today. Because I have not relaxed today yet.
They use some pretty cheap screws too. I mean, I'm sure that this did not cost, oh, okay. And the controller PCB is not, um, oh, where's my, it's not screwed down at all, which is <laughs> kind of crappy. Uh, so there's the shell, it's pretty standard. Um, injection molding on it is okay. It's adequate. Um, nothing really special here. We'll get under the microscope. We can just see what this chip is. It is an A A3-1419. It's probably some sort of microcontroller with USB capabilities. There's a lot of zero ohm resistors on this thing just acting as bridges because they probably didn't do a double sided. No, they did not. This is a single sided board. So those are just used for jumpers, for getting from one place to another. Um, kind of a cheap board. This is about the quality that my stuff is at um, because I don't have access to really high quality circuit board stuff. Uh, yeah, so nothing interesting there. Sorry if I disappointed. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I'm gonna do. Um, yeah. Uh, have a great night. I'm going to go relax, uh, and I hope this helps in some way. Or at least I hope it gets you inspired or something. I don't know. Night. Bye.